Okay, well, today we're going to talk about the NFC West, as Josh alluded to. So this division as a whole, it holds the Super Bowl champion. And honestly, Joe, I think we should start out with them. So, Joe, get us to L.A. You're right. They are the Super Bowl champs. And fuck their record last year. They were the champs. So this offseason, they brought Troy Hill back. Um, they added Kyron Williams, some big uglies, and the king, Bobby Wagner, to this defense. Um, starting off on offense here, we have Matt Stafford. He is currently going at QB 12. Matt Stafford is always overlooked, yet always a value. He almost threw 5K in yards last year and 41 freaking touchdowns. Good for third and second, respectively, in the league. Always a threat for a monster game with the best wide receiver room in the game. I will say that again. The best wide receiver room in the game. Well, who can stop Matt Stafford? People are drafting Burrow six spots ahead of my dude. No, thank you. That's that's ridiculous. It's so not six spots, six quarterbacks above. Six quarterbacks, yes. It, it's ridiculous. The value you're getting on Stafford at QB 12, take him and run. Just just wait on quarterback this year. Not to, steal, up, your, not, no, not to steal your thunder, but I want to get this out now. The last like 10 years with Stafford, he's, he's always like the QB 10, QB 12, QB 14. Uh, disregarding the last few years in Detroit, starting at 2017 and going backwards, he was 7th, 6th, 8th, 15th, 7th, 9th, 5th. And then, of course, last year he was 5th. Uh, so this man is not the 12th quarterback off the board, just letting you know. And if, if you do get him there, that is a – you are having you have a solid QB room. It is ridiculous how people sleep on this, dude. Every year, yeah. annually, Sorry, Joe. perpetually sleeping on him. It's true. So at running back, everyone's darling – Cam Akers coming in at running back 18 on underdog ADP. Talk about a meteoric rise in ADP recently. You're not going to get him an RB18 anymore, just letting you know. People seem to overlook the fact that Akers has never had one top 10 running back finish, even while getting the lion's share of the work, except for the last four weeks of 2020. He never had one in 2020 at all. And I get it. The offense is studly. His, he's recovering from an Achilles injury. And that was super awe-inspiring that he's back on the field, but can he ever fully recover from that? The potential is there, and the value is okay if you are getting him at that spot, but any higher, I am absolutely not biting on Cam Akers here at all. Bad line. They lost Whitworth. They're plugging the holes there. I don't like it. Daryl Henderson, always there to steal work from Cam Akers, but he's already battling a soft tissue injury. Man, he's so efficient when given the chance, but are we really thinking he can stay healthy this year? I believe you can take him at RB45 where he's going right now and get an excellent return on value if he does happen to make his way onto the field and stay there for a while. But I really like Kyron Williams at running back 94 right now. Do you want to talk about players who had poor combine testing and went on to be studs? Anquan Bolden, Terrell Suggs, Navarro Bowman, some of the best that ever did it. Williams did test poorly, but what he was able to do at Notre Dame was spectacular. A true rusher, receiver, and blocker. I, I really think the fantasy community is sleeping on this dude, especially with the way that running back room looks right now. Jeff Wilson, Rex Burkhead, and Matt Breda are going ahead of him. You heard it here first. He could be a league winner. So go get some Kyron Williams on your team. It's not going to cost you much to do it. You guys got anything on the running backs? I, I agree. I actually thought you were an Acres homer. I've never been that like last year before the injury, he was going way too high in my opinion for a guy who literally had played four games basically. So I was I get, high on him when he was going like nine, 10 in the rookie drafts. That's where no, I was no, not in the, I'm not even talking about the rookie drafts. I'm talking yeah. about before last season, he was going in that like 20 ish top 20 players off the board. And I was just like, I'm not buying that. Like I'll, I won't take it. Obviously he got injured. It was a sad situation. He's still got to come back from that. And I think if anything his ADP is a little bit better now, but at the same time, it's still a little too high for me for a guy who hasn't showed it yet. Yeah. I mean, he can be good and hopefully he will be, but like we're for fantasy, we want sure things, especially in those rounds. I yeah. know why people want to do it. Yeah. But. I, I, I think the everybody's a little cool off on Kyler, Kyron Williams because of his what you know what he did at the combine when he was you know slow as molasses but honestly I, I think that has been a little overblown well not even a little way overblown and i think that he could very well be a very viable part of this backfield i mean there's a lot of people that think that cam makers is going to come in and get the lion's share of the work here over daryl henderson over kyron williams 
I just don't don't believe it yet. And I get that he's supposedly an RB2. Um, a lot of people are going to have him at the 17-18 spot, I think, in their rankings when the pros come out and do it. But I need to see it before I believe it, personally. I, I have him a little bit lower than most. It won't be um, it won't be a running back I'm targeting this year. And that's simply because they use the passing game as a running game some of the time, too. So it's yeah. And Kyron Williams really excels in that role. So exactly. I'm going to do it in honor of Matthew Barry retiring. I'm giving the Barry bump to Kyron Williams this year. No, the offensive pump. The OPP. The OP pump. <laughs> offensive points pump. OPP, you know me. OPP. <laughs> right. Under the wide receivers. Cooper Cup. He's your wide receiver one on underdog. Oh, my God. Regression candidate. Oh, yeah, no shit. He had an absolutely historical wide receiver season. Sean McVay will figure out a way to replicate his success last year. No wide receiver in the league was matched up more on linebackers last year. And who was it in 2020? It was Robert Woods. So Sean McVay is going to get him matched up on linebackers. This is your wide receiver one in fantasy. Don't get cute with it. This is your guy. The addition of Allen Robinson maybe takes a little bit off of this plate, but he had 191 targets last year. So even if he loses some of those, he will be just fine. Speaking of Allen Robinson, last year was an absolute mail in year. Last year was Chicago. They disrespected him and he showed it on the field. He was not happy. He is fully healthy and he's 28 years old. I will say it again 28 years old. Allen Robinson with a chip on his shoulder is a dangerous scenario for defenses across the league. And then we got Van Jefferson. He had 89 targets last year, which he put up some pretty seller numbers on that one. But he showed he could function even with OBJ in the fold. Right now, with the addition of Allen Robinson, I think we're looking at like a late stage DJX type numbers for Van Jefferson. He's going to have some big games. He's a sneaky value in best ball. And he's a definitely definite buy for me in Dynasty right now. And Tutu Atwell is just a name to monitor. He didn't do a damn thing last year. But if he's dropped, scoop him up. He, he's got talent. Going on with the pass catchers, we got Tyler Higby. He's currently tight end 19. Watching Tyler Higby is a catch 22. What he does on the field looks impressive, but he rarely makes big plays. He dives all over the field. He flops all over the field, but he rarely catches the ball. He did have the third most red zone targets in the league last year, and he is tied to Matt Stafford but he is still fourth or fifth in the pecking order. And he is currently being drafted behind Albert O, Gerald Everett, and Logan Thomas. He actually could be nice value this year. I've talked a lot of shit on Tyler Higby, but where he's going right now, you could do worse at, at tight end or at tight end too. He's a solid backup tight end. I mean, I'd take him as my backup. I, I'm not excited about him, but I'm like, oh, okay, he, Higby's he there. He looks like one of those wacky, wild, flailing, inflatable tube mans out there. I like Joe's strategy of tanking Tyler Higby's ADP, and then now he's like, you know? You know what? Yeah, kind of a value, you know? He's a I'm joke. A realist, he's a clown. Man. I'll take him. I'm a realist. I like value. I love it, Joe. I love it. I'm sure you'll end up with Mike Williams, too, by the end of this. <laughs> he's going way too he high. He is going very high. I don't he know is. about all that. Yeah, he's right after Keenan Allen. It's ridiculous. But anyway, so, yeah. My only argument with your conversation, I actually really like it. I think Van Jefferson's a good steal. That's not an argument. I just, I, I really like his ADP right now because I think he's going to have room. I think everybody like has saw what Aaron or Allen Robinson did on the Bears the last few years, and I don't know if anyone noticed, but the Bears didn't know what the hell they were doing the last few years. So don't look at that. Allen Robinson was pissed last year, man. He wasn't doing oh, a yeah. damn thing for Chicago. But the one thing I disagree with you on is Cooper Cup being the number one wide receiver. I don't think it will happen. I like, like, like you said, the it's there's gonna be regression here, and it's gonna be hard, and it's gonna be hard to face. I'm probably not gonna get him because he's in the first round right now. There's no way I'm thinking about drafting Cooper Cup. I mean, it's the back end, so if you get like the the flip and you get to be able to grab him and someone else right there, sure. I just. I can't imagine he's going to do anywhere near what he did last year. I think we're looking back at what he's good, what he did in the past. I mean, it, and it's still going to be good. Points more than Jamar Chase. I, 70 I, points more than Justin Jefferson. The only one that was close was Debo last year. I think he could be wide receiver three, four, five. I just don't think he'll be number one. Who I, do you think would be not wide receiver one, Josh? Let's get it out here. Put, um, put, put it on paper. Justin Jefferson. Um, 
CD Lamb has a chance. Devontae Adams has a chance. Um, even though I've railed on the Raiders. Um, I was about to say, I feel your Raiders <laughs> demolishing. I'm just saying has, has a chance. Out. I mean, any of these wide receivers have a chance. Stephon Diggs has a chance. Debo Samuel has a chance. I I just I just don't think Cooper Cup will be number one. I think he'll be worth it in the end. You'll get the points from him. But I think really if he was in that like 16th pick and you got to grab like Najee Harris here and then go grab Cup in the second round, I think you're a good pairing. I just I can't really want to get Cooper Cup in the first round. I, I'm not feeling good about my team if that's my first. I round. had a Cup Etienne start, man, and I am feeling great about that. Yeah, that's I have a feeling that team is going to be really bad, Joe. I'm not trying to be rude. It's going to be you, so. Good. You went so young. And I'll tell you bad. what, my my zero RB strat that I'm going to use this year, which I am by the way going to use for almost every one of my drafts, um, unless I get the number one pick. Uh, my zero RB strategy this year is going to heavily feature Cooper Cup in it. It's just what are you going to do with, if you get the third pick? What are you going to do, Cooper Cup? Yeah, probably. Mm. I think that's a mistake. I'm just, I'm just saying. Wide receivers win. That's that's. that's I agree. I, Wide I've receivers noticed. are important, but also running backs are as well. No, yeah. they're not. Until they're they get hurt, like people. Christian McCaffrey, and then your seasons down the tank. <laughs> Go by the championship. Well, it wasn't because of him. <laughs> it wasn't. You're right. <laughs> and, uh, and that's a keeper league, so that's a little different um, than redraft. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, I think I, I mean Cooper Cup's going to be the guy I'm after in because I am going to do zero RB and I think he's perfect. Allen Robinson, I still think has a, a ton of value even where he's going in the ADP right now. So I think this entire offense, maybe not Tyler Higby, um, is good value. I won't be after Cam Akers, but I can't lie to you if he's staring me down there when the second quarterback run starts or the I, I, I think I might be after it then. So. I, I think this is a good offense. I, I, I you know, hail Sean McVay. He, he, he's, he's done it. <laughs> he's a genius. He always, does it. That. he always does it. So the defense, we got Aaron Donald. Do we really need to talk about him? He's an absolute game wrecker. Well, some he's people a- don't play IDP, so maybe you do need okay. to tell them. He's a cheat code if your league starts defensive tackles. Um, yep, really just is. saying, if, if they do, he's top three pick easily. Kanye got him his deal. Now just let the man go to work. <laughs> Bobby Wagner. This is just an embarrassment of riches here. He instantly plugs the middle of this defense and will continue getting those cheap tackles as Floyd and Donald and Robinson and everyone just wreak havoc on the lineup there. So love Bobby Wagner. Jalen Ramsey, perennial DB2. He's one of the few cornerbacks that make enough splash plays to be started in non-quarterback leagues at your defensive back slot. Taylor Rapp. Strong safety, 91 tackles last year, one and a half sacks, four interceptions. You could do a lot worse as your safety number two, even your safety number one. And then you got Leonard That's Floyd, 11 sacks last year, and he's tied to Bobby and Donald for the foreseeable future with a five-year deal there. This is the base of your defense. Now, they have Sean Robinson. He looked pretty good last year. They have Justin Hollins returning from injury. Ernest Jones, I think we're still a couple years away from him really making a name for himself. And then you got Jordan Fuller and Troy Hill. I, this this defense is stacked. Not a lot of depth on it, but uh, you don't need it when you get the stars it. they have. No, exactly. They the Rams actually listen to my fantasy football strategy, and uh, I love it. Yeah, well, they have literally a million bajillion dollars, and they can somehow get around the cap to make every deal in the possible in the, you know in the NFL work. I, it's it's one of these teams where I just when you tell me the cap matters it's hard to see it sometimes and this team is very much one of those where they've pushed the money to the back end of most of these contracts so that they have a cheap team up front and it's just frustrating to look at because a lot of these teams you're you want your team for example to get better and you see a team like this where it's like well okay they're just putting together a fantasy lineup all of a sudden and you know they reload the thing in four is, years, they are going to be ass. The thing is, and here's a, a, a tidbit for everyone out there, this team could still potentially add players down the road. Odell Beckham is still looking to add or, you know, come back to the Rams when he gets healthier uh, come December. So that's like another potential person of interest for this team. But there's just, you know, it, it's just a, a, an embarrassment of riches on this starting lineup. You're not really going to want depth options, but the starting lineup is freakish it pisses me off honestly and i I don't think we can be remiss without saying fuck crocky so just want to throw that one out there um not a big fan as a st louis uh, native 
good for you, I guess. But like, I do actually really love the players on this team. That's the thing. I don't, I'm not mad at that, but uh, yeah, no, that's mm, mm, mm. all right. Anyway. Yeah. Frustrating to say the least, but anyway, Rams over under is 10 and a half. Okay. Yeah. We got Buffalo, Atlanta, Arizona Cardinals, San Francisco, 49ers, then the Cowboys, the Panthers, the 49ers, the Bucks, the Cardinals, the Saints, the Chiefs, the Seahawks, the Raiders, the Packers, the Broncos, the Chargers, and the Seahawks. That's actually a pretty tough schedule. They're going to have to earn it. Well, I mean, I hope so. They won the, the championship, but they got freebies against Seattle this year. I think we can both say that. They're going to beat the Cardinals at least one of the two times. San Francisco is a little dicey because they play different. So that's at least three wins in their division. And then outside of that, they play like the Panthers. I just, I think 11 wins completely within the realm of possibility. That that sounds right. I like it. I would say 11 is pretty much their, I wouldn't say cap because they can win all of these games. It's very clear. So, right. but I'd say 11 is probably where they end up at. So I'm taking the over as well. Yeah. Over, over. and not thinking twice about it. Also, uh, Joe, you said their, their line was injured I, I, or not as good now that we were at the scone. There's still the 11th ranked offensive line at the moment. So yeah. that line still is strong. I, I would like to see them get a running game going, but I don't think they're going to do it because they don't have to. I mean, they'll, yeah. they'll run the ball, but it's not going to well, be like... the thing is, and I was talking with a couple of Rams friends, and they said that really the, the, the line that they lost was most of their run blocking guys. It wasn't their pass blocking guys. Mm-hmm. So the offense that they're running is still going to, you know, not necessarily be the worst uh, maybe the run game takes a little hit but didn't have much of a run game last year so it's not like they're competing against much 